In this video, we're gonna learn about how to use the grid method and more importantly, how to get rid of it. Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth lesson of the second chapter of the first book of the R Journey series. In this lesson, we're gonna talk about the grid method. The grid method is basically adding the grid to your reference image and then adding a matching grid to your drawing to simplify the copying process of a drawing. But before we dive into this method, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment down below. When you draw an image without a grid, you use your eyes to measure every point you see on the object that you are drawing, mentally, while you draw. Now it's easy to do this if you have been drawing for a while, but measurements are a bit harder when you're starting out. So the grid method is simply shortening the distance that you are measuring from each point on the object compared to the rest of the page. Instead of seeing each point horizontal and vertical lines to the edge of the page, you are measuring it to the edge of the grid square instead. And the smaller the grid, the easier the measurement will be. But keep in mind, the smaller the square, the more rigid your drawing gonna look like, since you are using your wrist to draw tiny lines instead of a big swooping dynamic lines. So you have to balance between the simplicity of a smaller grid and the rigidness of your final drawing. But don't worry, by the end of this video you will learn how to do any grid of any size or shape and how you can convert it to a dynamic grid that fits your needs. Do know that this method is to an artist what a training wheel is to a kid's bicycle. It has its benefit in the beginning, but eventually you have to get rid of it to draw better or it will hinder your skill for a long time. What you're gonna see at the end of this video is how I weed myself off this training wheel and back into normal hand-eye coordination drawing method. With that said, let's begin with how to draw the grid. Here we will see how to draw the grid for a vertical or horizontal image in different grid sizes. The most important part is to make sure you have one ratio for all your grid. Unless you're doing a dynamic grid which we'll discuss later on. It's more preferable to do a square grid rather than a rectangle grid. But a grid of rectangles is okay as well. Even with other shapes like triangles, it's just easier to go with a square in the beginning. If you are using a traditional method to draw, like a pen or paper, here are three methods to use to draw the grid. All of them are fine, but the third one is the one that I advise you to go with. The first method is to use a ruler, to measure half the distance horizontally and draw the center line. Then measure the vertical center and draw the vertical center line. Then measure the half distance of each rectangle and divide it in half as well. Well. This way you can quickly get a decent grid in few minutes. The only issue is uh, that it's a rectangle grid instead of a square one. Not a big problem as we will see later, but I would prefer to go with the squares first. The second method is to measure the random unit of like 1 cm or 2 cm line and repeat it horizontally till the edge. Now the last part of the image won't be equal to the others, but the rest will be 100% squares. Then we will repeat the same thing vertically and then connect the lines. Here you will have a square grid with the exception of the edge on the bottom and to the left. Now the third method is where you would get 100% square grid. You first measure the length and the width of the reference image and multiply them together. Here we have 4 cm by 5 cm which is equal to 20. 20 is the number of squares this image will produce. So we will divide 4 cm by 4 and the 5 cm by 5. This way you will get 20. Connect the lines and you will get 20 perfect square grid. Personally, this is how I would do it. Now, if you are working on a tablet, well, you can use the wizardry of Photoshop to do the same thing faster with a bit of cheating. Here I have four different size squares that I want my grid to follow. So I take the first size square, select it, reduce the outline by three pixels by control click on the layer, then go to select, modify, contract by three pixels, and by deleting the middle part, you will end up with the outline of a square. Repeat it to the edge of the image, then resize the whole thing to fit the reference image. Repeat it again vertically, and this time, stretch it to the edge of the image, and then delete the rest. If the edge is on the outside, push it further. If it's closer to the inside, stretch it. And in less than a minute, you have a perfect small square grid. To make the grid a bit bigger, simply start with a bigger square. 
You can do the same thing traditionally by increasing the division of each edge. For example, you can divide the 4 cm edge into 2 as in 2 cm each and the 5 cm into 2.5 instead of 1. So here we do the same process as before and we will end up with 24 square grid. Let's go even bigger. This will be important later on to get yourself trained into drawing larger and larger grids as you get better at drawing till eventually you will end up with one grid square which is the point of this method in my opinion. And here are all the grids we did side by side from small to large. Now we do the horizontal reference grid which is not really different than before I just like to cover all the aspects of the subject I'm talking about so you don't have to wonder about it on your own later. Simply repeat the squares and make it fit your reference. And here they are side by side from small to large. Now the grid method isn't just for drawing the exact replica of the original reference size. You can also use it to enlarge or shrink an image by using the same method. For example, you can make the grid first on the image and then follow the steps as we did before. But instead, you can multiply each square by 2 to make it larger. Then you can simply follow the lines in each square to make your drawing twice as big as your reference. Or on the other hand, you can divide the size of square by 2 and make your grid smaller and then draw the image shrunk down to a smaller size. The grid method is adaptive and useful when you are starting out, so make sure you are using it to its full potential. The most important part is the ratio of the squares. Whether you make the grid bigger or smaller, the ratio as in the width and length of the square should be equal to the multiplied or divide value of your grid. So if the original square is 1 by 1, make sure your bigger grid is 2 by 2 or 3 by 3 and so on. And for the smaller grid, it should be half by half or quarter of a centimeter by quarter of a centimeter and so on. Don't make your reference square grid into a rectangle grid on your drawing because you're gonna have a lot of troubles ahead of you. Now in this chapter, I'm going to discuss different style of the grid you can use. I mentioned that I prefer square grid, but you can be creative with it. Not for the sake of being creative, but to fit your subject matter better. The only tricky part is how to get the grid right with different style. For example here, I'm using a curve to divide this image into equal shape curved squares that fit my arc better than the normal straight square. But it's a bit harder to do this with a pen and paper, that's why I advise you to do this method using a tablet only. But for the next one, it's easier to do it on both medium. This is a triangulated grid that you can divide as much as you want. First, divide the image from corner to corner, meeting in the center of the image. Then divide it vertically and horizontally. Now if you look really close you will see that you have 4 rectangles. You can divide each of these rectangles the same way from corners to corners and vertically then horizontally. You can keep on dividing it smaller and smaller as much as you want ending up with a triangulated grid. Now this one is the dynamic grid which I personally prefer to use for tricky images. See in this grid you don't focus on all of the reference at once, only at the parts that you find a bit complicated. You start dividing the canvas into 4 equal parts and then see where is the trickiest part you want to draw. Maybe it's the mountain in the back, 
maybe it's the broken piece of arc that you see up there so what you do is to divide the part of the grid that the object is tricky in into smaller scale grid cutting it in both ways then you pick again the rectangle you see the most details in and dividing it even further and so on and so forth till you have the specialized grid that fit your subject matter instead of the uniform grid all over your image this method is great once you master the basic grid first do not attempt to try this right away before you master the basic grid here i do the same for the part of the mountains in the center as you can see this is not a full grid but an optimized adaptive grid to fit your need for information in a certain parts of the drawing And here are the three grids side by side. Okay, now we know how to draw the grid. Let's do an example for the small grid and go step by step toward removing the training wheels. As I said before, the reason we use the grid is to shorten the distance you measure from the edge of your page to the edge of the square and bit by bit, you start doing these measurements mentally in an imagined grid instead of a drawn one. Here you can see how the grid helped with reducing the space you measure from the edge of the page to the smaller distance of the squares to even smaller ones. We do the 8 by 7 grid like before and number it horizontally and label it by letter vertically. This will help you to know which square you are working on so you don't get confused. So we start at the A8 square and measure the edge of the banana to the square edge. Once we are done with the square, we move on to the next. In order to draw more dynamic drawing that isn't rigid, you can use larger strokes that cover more than one square at once by pointing out where the object outline will hit the edge of each square you want to draw on. This way you can connect more than 3 to 4 squares at once with one big swoop of a line that doesn't turn your object outline into a polygon edge. If you can't remember where the edge hit on more than one square, you can leave an X mark on each rectangle and then connect them together later on. Or maybe use a dot. Once you are done with the initial shape, it's time to remove the grid and add a new layer on top and draw with a darker, more confident line on top. Don't worry, you can mess it out since you have the correct frame underneath it. And there is the image drawn using a small grid. Now let's make the grid a bit larger, like taking 9 squares from the previous grid and merging them into one. And then we can repeat the squares to end up with 9 squares grid. It's above medium but that's okay. Let's see how this goes. You can name your grid the same way as before or just start drawing from the top right to the left. Now it's a bit harder to draw than before since there are more lines to copy in one square. You won't be doing this right away as I will explain in the homework section. You will go larger only when you are comfortable enough to do so. Once you are done with the basic frame, remove the grid and fix your drawing.
Okay, let's get even a larger grid with the reference image being divided into four equal parts only. Now you will depend on your hand-eye coordination skill a little bit more than before. You can use points on the square to see where most parts of the object cross each grid. This way you won't mess up where the object is going. Then you can connect the lines in a dynamic edge all the way across the grid. Finally, when you are done, you can refine your drawing and finalize it. For the final part, this is where you eventually have to go. After you practice each size a lot and for a long time, you can finally remove the training wheel and measure your object to one single square your drawing canvas. This will depend on your hand-eye coordination skill 100%, but after you have done it over and over, it will become less intimidating than going at this right away from the start. This is what I honestly believe the grid method should be used for. It's not forever and it's not a sheet. It's just a step toward enhancing your skill of drawing. Just like a training wheel on a bike, they are meant to get you cycling with a bit of help till you know how to balance yourself later. And now we can see all of them side by side. They won't be copies of each other since it's impossible to draw the same thing twice exactly, but they all look like a decent drawing. Personally, I prefer the last one. Once you know how to draw, the grid method actually makes your drawing worse, which is a great sign that you can draw things right now. Now let's get into more complicated examples. The banana example was just the tutorial part. Now we go into the easy mode with the cartoon image. Not many lines, but it's still a bit more complicated than a banana. We do the same thing here as before. We start with a small grid and we measure each point of the object we are drawing to the edge of that grid square. Once we have enough points to draw the edge, we go for it in a large sweep. If the edge is continued into another square, it's a good way to draw the edge pointers for both squares and go for the edge in one stroke. It will make your drawing much less rigid than drawing each square by itself. Now as the grid gets bigger, the edge of the reference gets larger, but the same principle remains. Now measurements, measurements and more measurements. That's all what this is all about. And then finally when you remove the grid you can do the exact same grid but in your mind instead of your canvas. You can even do a dynamic grid in your mind to divide and measure each edge into its surroundings. You can only reach this level if you have done the previous levels for a quite a while. It won't happen in one day, trust me. Alright, now let's go ahead and draw it in a small, medium and large grid before we do it without it. You can follow along or do a drawing of your own, it's up to you. So I start with looking at where each edge of the object is entering or exiting the grid square. And take a note of it mentally or if you want you can draw a, a point or an X on your canvas at the edge of the square. It will be your basic frame and you can draw on top of it later on.
and the drawing is copied perfectly using the small grid in about 12 minutes. Take your time with it and be very accurate. It will help you a lot later on. Now let's try a medium grid of 9 and see how it goes. Same as before, observe the edges and make note of where and how they exit or enter the squares. Alright, the medium grid is done, let's go to the big one. Divided in halves, we use more of the observation skills to draw the middle parts that are furthest away from the grid edges. Dividing these big grids mentally than on the canvas. See the smaller the grid, the less mental calculation you have to do, and more dependent on the grid you will be. And the larger the grid, the more mental measurements you're gonna have to do to get the drawing right and the more practice you will get to let go of the grid eventually. And this is the large one done. After that, you can draw it without the grid. But for me, I will move on to the next. Trying the different grid we talked about to draw this landscape. The triangle grid may have its benefits since the edge will cut into many inner lines, more than the square, and will make it easier to see where the edges are going. So try different grids for different subjects and see what fits your style and your subject the most.
and it's done. As always, I like to do these lessons example from easy to hard, and nothing harder than drawing a portrait. So here I used a very small grid to draw this portrait. When you first start, this will be a good thing. But as you move on, you will see that it's a bit rigid to draw a portrait with small grid. But it's okay as a start. Also, the more dynamic and longer your line will be, the more squares you draw at once and the less rigid your drawing will look like. Now start from the eyes if you want and move on bit by bit to finish the drawing. Take your time here, speed is not what you are looking for, it's accuracy.
Now the basic shape is done, it's time to remove the grid and fix any mistakes while refining the final shape. As I said, you won't mess it now since the proportions are all in place. You just need to make your lines look a bit better. It's easier to do this on a tablet, but if you are doing this on paper, make sure your initial drawing is very light. This way you can redraw on top of it with a much refined darker lines. Once you're done, you can try it with larger grids until you don't need them anymore. Now this last chapter is something I didn't plan initially. I made this especially for a couple of people who commented on my upside down video saying that not only the method didn't help their drawing, but it's actually made it worse. Now I did advise them to do the contour drawing first and try the upside down method later, but uh, here I'm gonna help them even more by telling them to draw the grid method and use the upside down method alongside it. This way they can be 100% sure they won't mess this up and they will get better at it. Once you do this upside down with a grid, make your grid bigger and bigger till you eventually can draw your image upside down without a grid and get the results I talked about in that video. Here I'm going with a larger grid than before, but I'm gonna do one more thing I didn't talk about yet. Covering the rest of your squares as you draw. This technique will also help the people who didn't make the drawing upside down work. I should have said it in that video to cover your image while you're drawing it. It will help your brain not to understand what you're drawing. By that, it won't mess it up for you. I will actually leave a comment on that video just to remind people to do that. To cover the drawing you are trying to copy upside down, except the lines that you are currently drawing. So here I'm drawing the same square from the grid. Then inverting the image behind it by cutting it out from the background, making a hole in the layer below it. Now I can move this cover square by square and only draw what I'm seeing. This is important to do with something like a portrait. Your mind will try to confuse you when you are drawing a face. Because the face is the most recognizable thing in the world. So this way all I'm seeing is lines. Not the face, but bunch of lines. So let's start from any square and start drawing this weird collections of lines.
Again, you can move the cover between squares. If you can't see where the line starts and ends, you can put the square in the middle. But don't forget to move it back to the edge so you don't mess up the distances and the measurements. You can go all over the picture and draw different squares. It's better not to follow parts that your mind recognize or your mind gonna start filling up the planks for you. Alright, now the moment of truth, the initial frame is done, let's flip it over and see how it goes. Well it's not that bad, if that's your first drawing, it will really surprise you. It will be much better than anything you draw without this method. So once you remove the grid, you can go over your drawing with a heavier line if you are doing this traditionally, or if you are doing this digitally, you can simply lower the opacity of the layer and make a new layer on top and fix the little mistakes you made across the way. Now of course we can add more details for this drawing but for now it's enough. So basically this is it for this lesson. So let's move on to the most important part of this video. How you can practice this method and how to get rid of it later on. As always there is an easy homework or a hardcore one if you are up to it. For the easy homework you can start out with a small grid and draw 5 different objects that you like using this small grid. Once you're done draw the same five again in a medium grid along with five new objects after that draw all 10 drawings in larger grids that are simply four squares only and add 10 new objects with the same grid once you finish all 20 draw all 20 objects without a grid and add 20 more to them using no grid whatsoever that is the easy homework yes it's easy i know you're shaking your head no but if you want to draw better you have to Break up the mileage for your drawings. If you wanna go hardcore, use the same numbers that I talked about for the easy mode, but instead of drawings, you do days. A whole day of drawing the grid. If you can do five drawings a day, it will be great. 
so 5 drawings a day for 5 days and so on. By doing this homework you will end up with 75 drawings for the easy mode and 375 drawings for the hardcore mode. The more you practice the better you will learn the grid method and the faster you will get rid of it. Ok this is it for lesson 4 of the first book of the art journey series. It's the third exercise in a long list of exercises for beginners yet to come. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you want to see more art tutorials for beginners, paintings or more visual library videos. Please click the subscribe button underneath this video to stay tuned and click the notification bell to stay up to date with new videos. Before I go I'd like to thank my patreons who donated to my channel. If you'd like to donate to my channel please go to patreon.com slash rainwalker. Thank you all for your generosity. If you want to see other videos for beginners please click over here or if you want to check out how to draw the figure series which I'm at I think number 12 as of now you can click on it over here. As for now thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.